Today, we are making fried chicken, and not just any fried chicken, a very, very special concoction of a fried chicken recipe that I have decided to try over the course of like the past year. The question is, have you ever wondered what Taiwanese popcorn chicken would taste like on the bone? Taiwanese popcorn chicken is kind of like a chicken nugget. It's usually served at Taiwanese cafes and restaurants. If you go to a boba store, more than likely they're gonna have popcorn chicken there as a snack. But it's really, really delicious. It incorporates soy sauce, ginger, and Chinese spice spice in its marinade and it creates a very, very distinct flavor profile. And that flavor profile I am absolutely in love with. It's the same flavor that they use for the really, really popular Taiwanese dish, pork chop over rice. Pai gu fan. My Mandarin's really, really bad, but uh, that's the only Mandarin you're gonna get out of me today. But yeah, so I was asking these questions, like how come they can't just make that flavor profile with a whole chicken, with, you know, chicken on the bone? And the sad truth about the eating experience these days is that everyone's going for simplicity and convenience and overall cleanliness. Chicken, for example, has been turned into fillets, chicken strips, chicken nuggets, chicken sandwiches, and I feel that eating chicken on the bone, just old, good old fashioned fried chicken is starting to fall to the wayside. Nothing replaces fried chicken on the bone for me. So anyways, I decided to experiment and I've come up with a pretty, pretty delicious recipe for five spice fried chicken. All right, so first up we have our ingredient spread. Obviously we're gonna have the chicken. Here I'm using a picnic pack and it has a combination of chicken thighs and chicken drumsticks. I like my dark meat. Not a really big fan of uh, white meat when it's being fried. It tends to dry out. But if I was being healthy, I would use white meat. And if I was being healthy, I probably wouldn't even be eating fried chicken to begin with. But anyways, dark meat, roughly 4.5 pounds of dark meat. For the spices we have, let me cross reference with my ingredients book. One teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, two teaspoons of Chinese spice spice, two teaspoons of white pepper, one teaspoon of black pepper, and one teaspoon of salt. Now the Chinese five spice, as you can tell by the name, it has roughly five spices in it. But some people might even refer to it as a seven spice mix, depending on who, where you get your five spice from. But whatever it is, five spice has a very distinct flavor and that flavor does come from the star anise. Kind of a cinnamony flavor. Five spice is the key ingredient here that is gonna give our fried chicken that distinct Taiwanese popcorn chicken flavor. All right, moving on to the wet ingredients. We got two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of oyster sauce. Now oyster sauce is a condiment from Cantonese cuisine where I think they just turn oysters into sauce. It doesn't sound delicious, but it's fantastic condiment. You should definitely give it a try. And three tablespoons of Chinese rice cooking wine. And lastly, our fresh ingredients. Now when I first experimented with this recipe, I was using onion powder, garlic powder, ginger powder, all these things. But I find that to create that Asian flavor, you definitely need to use a mixture of fresh ingredients. So instead of using the powdered forms, I've opted to use fresh ingredients. Here we have roughly three tablespoons of minced garlic. We'll need three tablespoons of minced ginger and three tablespoons of green onions. Actually, this might be more than three tablespoons. It's three stalks of green onions diced. There's a lot of ingredients involved, but Cooking process wise, we're just gonna throw everything together in a big bag and uh, super, super easy. Let's get started. We are gonna take a jumbo sized plastic bag. So in goes the chicken. Next, I like to pour in the wet stuff just uh, so there's something sticky that the spices and the fresh ingredients can cling on to. Next, the fresh ingredients, green onions, ginger, and lastly, our plate of spices and just dump all of that in there. And once we have that done, we're gonna go zip it up, lock it, and massage. And I like to turn it upside down, right side up, sideways. I just wanna get all the fluid and spices and fresh ingredients, make sure every piece of chicken is covered in our beautiful, beautiful flavors. And once you've got it done massaged, we're gonna place it into the fridge and we're gonna wait one hour. If you have the time, two hours is great, three hours is great, four hours is great. Overnight, probably the most ideal, just to get like that full essence of the flavor. But today, since we're making this video, I only have one hour to spare. Next, while we're waiting for the chicken to marinate, we are going to set up our dredging station for frying. Station one, two whole eggs whisked. Station two, flour, 
two whole cups of flour. And in the past, I've also tried adding spices to the flour mix just to, you know, add more flavor, but I think I might've gone overboard with the flavor from before. So we're gonna keep it simple, two whole eggs and flour. All right, and moving over to our skillet, we are going to fill up this skillet up to the halfway mark. Turn on the stove and wait for the oil to heat up. I keep it really, really simple with checking the temperature of the oil. I don't have a fancy thermometer, not that thermometers are extremely fancy, I just don't have a thermometer. So if you also don't have a fancy thermometer for checking the temperature of your oil when you're frying, I like to take a trusty old chopstick, stick it straight down into the oil and hold it there for a few seconds. And then within a few seconds, if it starts to sizzle the tip of your chopstick and basically frying your chopstick, then that's when you know your vat of oil is hot enough to start tossing in some fried chicken. Before we start, I also want to mention that when you fry your chicken, you also want to have your bag of chicken pulled out from the fridge, maybe half an hour, just so that it's not cold when you're frying it. So what we want to do is have the chicken closer to room temp so that it cooks evenly, so the outside doesn't burn and the inside is, is raw. Pull out your fried chicken and into the egg wash it goes. And it's okay if the vegetables, the herbs start falling off a little bit, it's gonna happen, but trust the marinating process, the flavor is there. All that flour, will become the eventual crunch that we all look forward to when eating fried chicken. So make sure you get that flour pressed into the chicken as much as you can. Gently place the chicken into the vat of oil and uh, let the frying commence. For each chicken part, there's gonna be a different amount of cooking time involved. For drumsticks, 15 minutes of frying time. And then for chicken thighs, I like to go for a whole 20 minutes. As you cook, you want to flip the chicken pieces every two minutes. And honestly, just sit back, enjoy staring at the vat of oil, frying your chicken. All right, so now that we have all our fried chicken finished, it smells amazing, looks amazing. Before you decide to bite into your wonderful fried chicken, make sure to let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes, because when it comes to frying, why fried chicken is so juicy is the fact that the crust traps the moisture inside. It traps the heat, it traps everything that's delicious about this fried chicken inside that crust. And so the temperature is also very, very hot and doesn't cool down as fast as other types of cooking methods. In that time, I like to create my own hot sauce. There's a lot of wonderful hot sauces out there, uh, Louisiana, uh, Tabasco, whatever you like to use. What I like to do here at home is take some classic sriracha in the theme of the Chinese, Taiwanese, Asian inspired thing that we've got going on here with this dish. One part sriracha and one part vinegar. And what that does is it liquefies the sriracha closer to Tabasco or your traditional American hot sauce, but it has a unique Asian flavor profile. So biting into this fried chicken, it really does taste like that Taiwanese popcorn chicken if it had more chicken flavor. So yes, if you are a fan of fried chicken and you want to try a different flavor profile other than your typical buttermilk fried chicken, I implore you to try five spice fried chicken and uh, let me know what you think. Type in the comments down below. Tell me it sucks, tell me it's great. Tell me what I should make next and uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.